Welcome back to Reliving the War. It's time to go back in time and watch WWF Raw and WCW Nitro from May 13th, 1996. The WWF is still showing taped matches from Sioux City, Iowa, while Nitro is live from Nashville, Tennessee. Nitro this week is also a go-home show as Slambury is just six days away. We'll cover the Slambury results in the next episode, of course. Eric Bischoff lets us know that Lex Luger will face the Giant tonight in our main event. Even though Lex stayed out all night to queue up for a PlayStation 5, the total package will be in action and he will wrestle for the World Heavyweight title. Seriously though, Lex camped out in the arena to make sure he wouldn't miss this title shot. Remember last week when Jim Duggan took Lex Luger's place? How bad is Luger's timekeeping when he has to sleep rough just to make it to his match on time? Over on Raw, Ahmed Johnson is getting interviewed before his match with Zip of the Body Donnas. Sunny shows up and she wants to rub some oil on the Pearl River powerhouse. Ahmed blows her off by saying his mum told him to take out the trash, don't bring in the trash. The action starts up right away on Raw, so let's look at our first matches. Ahmed Johnson vs Zip on the WWF side and the Steiner Brothers vs The Public Enemy on WCW Nitro. Eric Bischoff asks if the public enemy are going to get Steinerized in this match and the smart money says yes they absolutely will. As Scotty Steiner and Rocco Rock start the match off, Bobby Heenan reminds us that the public enemy will remain a tag team during the Slambury Lethal Lottery Tournament whereas the Steiners will get split up and I really couldn't care less. It feels like WCW done a real poor job of building up the Lethal Lottery and Slambury in itself just didn't have any real hype. Scotty dumps Rocco Rock onto Johnny Grunt and Rick follows up with a double Steiner line. Rick then takes care of Grunge with a nice belly to belly suplex before Scott comes back into the match. Scott then hits an overhead belly to belly before the match briefly spills to the outside. The crowd are very much behind the Steiners here. Rocco Rock takes the lead but it doesn't last very long. Rick Steiner crotches his opponent on the top rope before delivering a suplex. It's incredible how Rick and Scott are treating their opponents like they weigh nothing at all. The public enemy aren't small by any means means yet the Steiners have no problem at all throwing these guys around the ring. A tilt the world side slam from Scott finds its mark but Grunge jumps into the ring resulting in Rock hitting a sloppy diving headbutt. Rocco makes up for it though after hitting this assisted top rope somersault flip. Give credit where it's due, this looked pretty good. The public enemy hit a double back elbow before Rocco goes to the top rope. He goes for a flipping senton, but Scott moves out of the way. Rick Steiner gets the hot tag and he completely cleans house with some more suplexes. The fight spills to the outside once again. Rocco misses another senton, only this time he hits his tag team partner. Rick throws Rocco Rock back into the ring and Scott hits the Frank and Steiner to score the win, even though Scotty was not the legal man. A good opener, thanks to the Steiner brothers really. I give Ahmed Johnson a hard time on this show but I'll say this much, his theme music was pretty good. The match starts off with Ahmed slamming his way out of a side headlock, Zip then applies a hammerlock, Ahmed reverses with a hammerlock of his own and then this happens. I watched this a few times to see what went wrong and it looks like Zip was supposed to land on his feet judging by Ahmed's reaction afterwards. I think Ahmed was supposed to flip Pritchard a little more than what he did and well disaster nearly struck on WWF Raw. Zip gets right back up and Ahmed delivers more punishment but yeah this could have been really bad. Sunny then makes an appearance and she distracts Ahmed. This allows the body donors to perform the old switcheroo and Skip jumps into the ring. I never got this at all and I know we're supposed to play along 
long, but Zip and Skip look absolutely nothing like each other. But sure, Skip beats up Ahmed for a while and we see a camel clutch. Ahmed stands up and we see an electric chair drop as Vince McMahon does his best to put over the power and agility of Ahmed Johnson. Skip gets back body dropped over the top rope and Zip tries to get back into the match. But look, the referee now notices that the body donors actually look different and Zip is unable to get back in. Why Mike Kyoto didn't realise this earlier is anyone's guess. We see a spine buster from Ahmed Johnson and we see the Pearl River plunge. Ahmed scores the victory. That will be a point for WCW Nitro then. The Ultimate Warrior is here to talk about Warrior University. During Warrior's WWF negotiations of 1996, Warrior would only sign with the WWF if he could also market his own line of merchandise along with his wrestling school, the Warrior University. Here's how it worked. Send the Warrior $10 for a pamphlet, and if you're chosen to enroll in the school, all you have to do then is pay roughly $5,000 to get training. The thing is, I'm pretty sure nobody notable graduated from Warrior University university, you got to ask yourself, if you were training to become a professional wrestler, would you really want the Ultimate Warrior as your coach? Moving on, we have Duke the Dumpster Drossy vs Vader on Raw, while Nitro presents David Taylor of the Blue Bloods taking on Chris Benoit. Benoit and Taylor start things off with a tense lockup that results in Benoit getting tripped up near the ropes. Taylor then shoots for the leg, but Benoit uses his strength to flip his opponent over. Again, Taylor goes for the leg and Benoit hits an enziguri. Dave Taylor then takes the lead for a moment after hitting a big European uppercut. Benoit gets outsmarted when he goes for a monkey flip, but a little payback comes when Taylor tries a leapfrog. Benoit mounts his opponent and a series of punches gets delivered before Taylor takes a slingshot in the corner. It's it's a small thing here, but I like how Taylor took the slingshot in a realistic manner. No jumping involved here. Hard knife edge chops follow courtesy of the Canadian Crippler. Benoit then gets tossed to the outside and Taylor follows up by using the guardrail and ring post to his advantage. Back inside the ropes, Benoit momentarily takes control and he goes to the top rope, but Taylor follows up with an electric chair drop before hitting a fallaway slam. This only gets a two count. Taylor then misses a second rope cross crossbody and this allows Benoit to hit a pinning dragon suplex for the win. There's nothing to complain about here, another solid match from WCW that just felt a little random. Duke the Dumpster Drossy is in the ring waiting to get his ass kicked by Vader. As Vader makes his entrance, Vince McMahon says, and I quote, here comes the load. Many would state a really big load. What Vince was doing under his table is anyone's guess, but Jim Cornette is going to find out. Thankfully, the Louisville Slugger is going to provide commentary for this match. I couldn't help but get distracted by this lady here sitting at ringside. Either she saw what Vince McMahon was up to under that desk, or she's had a good toke of the devil's lettuce. But anyway, Vader starts off with a right hand and he follows up by spitting on his opponent. The dumpster gets launched off the ropes, but he comes back with a boot to the balls and it actually looks like he connected here. Vader then takes a clothesline before Duke hits a crossbody that sends both men over the top rope. When we come back from break, Vader has turned things around. The big man hits a splash before bringing the dumpster back to the corner for more stiff shots. Vader follows up with a short arm clothesline and it looks like it's lights out for the dumpster. The Mastodon applies a chin lock and Duke gets his face stretched for a bit. Duke then gets out of the chin lock with a jawbreaker and Vader gets brought to the mat with a drop kick. The dumpster goes to the top rope as Jim Cornette begins to panic. Duke misses what I think was supposed to be a diving splash by taking all the impact on his shoulder. This looked pretty bad. And Jim Cornette's reaction afterwards is pure gold. Vader then hits the Vader bomb to score the win. Again, another match where you can't really complain, although it was a little predictable. I felt that the WWF match was more fun to watch though thanks to Cornette and Lawler's commentary. We have promos next, the Macho Man Randy Savage over on Nitro while The Undertaker and Paul Bearer address Goldust on Raw. Paul Bearer talks about the custom made casket that's going to be used at In Your House during the Goldust vs Undertaker match and just as the Phenom was about to address his opponent, Goldust comes to the ring along with Marlena. Bit strange seeing as Goldust was doing everything he could to avoid The Undertaker last week, but Goldust begins flirting with The Undertaker saying how the dead man is so tall, so dark. 
And so stiff. Goldust then asks what cologne Taker is wearing as it smells like embalming fluid number five. Goldust then tries to hold hands with the phenom but the Undertaker says no and the bizarre one gets brought to his knees. Mankind then hits the ring and he locks in the mandible claw. And while the Undertaker is out cold, Goldust totally violates him. Like he completely touches the Undertaker's little phenom here and this is enough to make the dead man sit up and chase Goldust away. At least we now know how to wake up from the paralysis of the mandible claw. Get your dong touched by a guy painted in gold. Speaking of dongs, Steve McMichael comes out of the building as Randy Savage is trying to get in. Both of these guys have problems with Ric Flair. The nature boy has stolen Miss Elizabeth and Flair is now on a quest to lure away Deborah McMichael. Mongo says he's the only man in WCW who can sympathise with the macho man and Mongo says that Ric Flair has made a mistake by bringing Deborah into all of this and what's really funny is how Mongo keeps calling Flair darling. You gone made a mistake darling, you made it real personal darling. Steve tells Macho to chill out because he has a plan. Mean Gene then wants to talk to Savage and Savage has completely lost his mind. Randy says he'll happily talk to Mean Gene but not in this lifetime. Randy then says he's going to win the battle bowl at Slamboree even if he has to drag the dead body of his tag team partner down the ringside. Mean Gene says that WCW officials have asked Randy to seek counselling or a psychiatrist. Randy says he saw a psychiatrist and she said that Randy has OCD, standing for one cool dude. I'm all for giving Mongo points just for being batshit crazy Mongo, and an unhinged Randy Savage is the best Randy Savage, but it's a point for WWF Raw here, let's try to remain sensible. VK Wall Street takes on Ric Flair next on Nitro while WWF Raw presents Aldo Montoya vs Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Bradshaw starts off on the offence with some clubbing blows but Montoya ducks a short arm clothesline. Montoya's follow up dropkick fails to bring Bradshaw to the mat and Montoya pays the price with a body slam. Uncle Zebekiah is providing commentary here and he says that Shawn Michaels is afraid of Bradshaw as Montoya takes a gut wrench powerbomb. Jerry Lawler says Shawn Michaels won't go after anyone who does doesn't wear a skirt as Montoya continues to get punished in the ring. Bradshaw squeezes the life out of the Portuguese man of war as Zebekiah says Aldo is now on trial in Bradshaw court. What a terrible line that was. And Bradshaw launches his opponent into the corner with force as I already begin riding this match off. This feels like a real waste of time. Bradshaw throws his arms in the air while shouting like a maniac and Montoya continues to take a beating. There's a glimmer of hope when Aldo delivers two drop kicks followed by another from the top rope that knocks Bradshaw down. Bradshaw is working like the giant here and it just doesn't work, he's overestimating his own size here. Bradshaw then hits a big boot that nearly takes Montoya's head off. Bradshaw again tries to decapitate his opponent with a big lariat. One, two, three, and it's all over. Montoya gets branded with ink after the match. I wasn't into this bout at all, I'm afraid. Afterwards, we get to see the WWF's recent visit to Kuwait, and check it out, the British Bulldog attacks Shawn Michaels on the beach, and that water does look a little on the grey side, doesn't it? Davy Boy runs away after trying to drown the heartbreak kid. Not much more to say. A video airs on Nitro that says our world is about to change. The words blood runs cold gets displayed as some kind of portal opens while frosting up the screen. Whatever this is, it's coming to WCW and I can't wait to find out more next week. VK Wall Street vs Ric Flair feels like another random matchup over on Nitro so let's see what happens. Something tells me Randy Savage is going to show up but who knows. Our match starts off with Rotunda gaining the upper hand with a side headlock and a shoulder tackle. Flair and Wall Street then trade hammer locks and everything looks good here. Flair brings Wall Street to the corner for a few knife edge chops but Wall Street answers with a hip toss and a back body drop. Flair begs for mercy before taking a timeout on the outside. Flair tries to build some offense but Wall Street brings Nate down with a drop toe hold. 
Wall Street then focuses on the leg as we go to commercial break. When we come back, Rick takes the turnbuckle bump and he gets sent to the outside. Rotunda strikes Flair at the guardrails and Rick gives us the face first bump. It's impossible to get tired of seeing this. Rick Flair's greatest hits continue as the Nature Boy gets launched from the top rope. A back body drop and a Samoan drop follows. Wall Street goes for the pin but Woman puts Flair's foot on the bottom rope. Flair finds himself on the outside once again but he dodges in the attack resulting in Wall Street smashing into the ring post. It's elementary from here, Flair applies the figure 4, Woman helps out a little and Ric Flair wins via submission. After the match, Flair Woman and Elizabeth go to their ringside VIP dining table where Mean Jean gets an interview. Flair kisses Miss Elizabeth while telling Randy Savage that he ain't dead yet and it's slamboree, Ric Flair Woman and Elizabeth will quote, knock WCW out its ass. Flair then addresses Mongo McMichael by saying that Steve had to roll in the dirt to become a four-time All-Pro, while the Nature Boy stayed up all night with his two wide receivers. Fantastic work. WCW Nitro gets the point, even though there was no appearance from Randy Savage. Main event time, PlayStation fanboy Lex Luger takes on the Giant on Nitro while click buddies go to war on WWF Raw. It's Shawn Michaels vs Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a non-title match. As Hunter makes his way to the ring, Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler let us know that this week's Raw is brought to you by Finger Blasting. HBK makes his way to the ring as Jerry Lawler tells Hunter's valet to watch herself. This Shawn Michaels guy is a skirt chasing deviant. The two men lock up and Hunter lands a quick arm drag. Shawn tries again but Hunter is able to take HBK down one more time. Michaels then gets frustrated when Hunter outsmarts him yet again. The hairband comes off as we go to commercial break so this shit is about to get serious. Annoyingly, Sean is in the driver's seat when we come back so we don't see how HBK turned things around but look, here's the spot that Zip and Ahmed totally messed up earlier. Hunter takes a hip toss before getting sent out of the ring. Sean skins the cat but he then just goes to the outside so no idea what he was doing here apart from showing off. HBK then approaches Hunter's valet on the outside. Hunter tries to attack Sean but HBK nails Hunter. Sean then skins the cat again to get into the ring and yeah this is a bit pointless isn't it? The next spot is great though. Sean grabs a headlock while Hunter is draped on the top rope. The referee tells Sean to release the hold and Sean obliges. Hunter's nose smashes on the mat and this gets a great pop from the audience. A side headlock gets applied. Hunter gets to his feet and he tries to launch Sean off the ropes, but HBK holds on to Hunter's nose. Hebner then tells Sean to release the hold after a count of five. Sean quickly releases and then he locks it in again. They're having fun out there and it comes across really well on TV. Sean continues to target the nose when Hunter fails to hit a monkey flip. HBK finds himself laid out on the top rope and Hunter kicks his opponent out of the ring. Mr. Perfect comes down the ringside. Vince and Jerry Lawler are unsure if Hennig has came down to check on Michaels or check on Hunter. We go to commercial break and Hunter is now fully in control. Sean takes a beating in the corner and Hunter also hits the Harley Race knee. Sean fights out of a chin lock but Hunter keeps the advantage. Triple H locks eyes with Mr. Perfect for a brief moment before going for a suplex on Michaels. While Sean is on the apron, Hunter lifts HBK up but Sean smoothly transitions into a crossbody. You've seen this done plenty of times but Sean makes it look completely effortless. Still, HBK can't build any offense here, it's small glimmers of hope that don't last very long but it works well here. The crowd are popping for every small thing HBK does. Hunter shows his more vicious side with a series of forearms in the corner and when we come back from commercial break Hunter is wearing Sean out on the mat. HBK begins making his comeback after getting launched into the turnbuckle. Hunter goes for the pedigree but Sean slingshots Triple H into the corner. HBK then hits an atomic drop followed by the flying forearm. Sean then lands the elbow drop but this only gets HBK a two count. Sean reverses a pile driver attempt with a Frankensteiner but Hunter follows up with a pin. It's only a two count. Hunter then goes for the pedigree once again. Sean counters with a backdrop. Sean then tunes up the band and he hits Sweet Chin Music for the win. An excellent main event this week from Monday Night Raw and I'd also say this was Hunter's best WWF match up to 
this point. This one felt like a proper main event, something Raw had been missing for a few weeks, and it was given adequate time here with it being around 20 minutes long. The curtain call incident though would happen at the end of the week and Triple H would not be having any matches like this for a long time. After the bout, Davy Boy Smith gets interviewed, he's going to face Jake Roberts on Raw next week while Shawn Michaels provides commentary. The Bulldog says Michaels better stay out of his way during his match. There are no entrances for the WCW main event, the competitors are already in the ring after a commercial break. Eric Bischoff apologises for Ric Flair saying the word ass on live TV. We'll have none of that edgy language around here, thank you very much. Lex Luger tries the Ric Flair strategy by throwing himself at the Giant but that never works. The Giant hits a big clothesline but Lex gets up, he tries to slam the big man but the Giant just grabs Luger by the face and throws him out of the ring. Lex reverses a suplex attack and the total package tries to bring his opponent down with clotheslines but again this never works. The Giant grabs Lex in mid-air and the total package gets slammed from corner to corner. The Giant chokes his opponent with his boot for a bit and then Lex tries to hit his bionic forearm but it has absolutely no effect on the WCW champion. We see Ric Flair enjoying some food at his VIP table as the match spills to the outside. Luger is finally able to hurt the Giant a little when and he knocks him off the apron. The giant grabs Luger and he drags him out of the ring. The two men go over to the nature boy's table and Lex Luger gets choke slammed through the furniture. The ref calls for the bell. We have a DQ finish. Jimmy Hart has to jump on the giant's back to stop the attack and the stinger shows up to check on his tag team partner. Gene Okerlund tries to get an interview but Sting tells Mean Gene to leave. The show ends then with Lex Luger not getting a PS5. The final point goes the raw. The Steiners and the Public Enemy scored Nitro the first point while Vader and Duke the Dumpster Drossy got the second. Goldust continues to entertain on Raw while Mongo McMichael's plans to end Ric Flair sound absolutely dreadful. VK Wall Street vs Ric Flair was a random yet fundamentally sound match and then Triple H and Shawn Michaels completely stole the show this week with a great main event. Raw wins reliving the war this week. Our scores are now 14 points to Raw, 15 points to Nitro and we've had 3 ties. Raw also won in the television rating scoring a 3.5 to Nitro's 2.3. Next week we have the fallout from WCW Slamboree 1996 along with matches featuring Sting, Luger and the Giant, while the WWF presents their Beware of Dog Go Home show. I hope you join me next week and I hope you have a great Christmas. Thanks for watching and take care.